She's still laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Welcome to Five Lemons Left. We're the real stuff, the lemons making lemonade. So pucker up because we're going to be discussing our life's lessons and the nitty gritty details of our spiritual journeys. Hey y'all, I'm Amanda. And I'm Drusilla. I'm Melissa. Hello, this is Morgan. And I'm Penny. Welcome to our podcast today. Gillis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Are we live? We're preparing. We're right Ooh, now. We're preparing live stream. Preparing Hi. live stream. Facebook. Awesome. Love it. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. That's what it says. Stream Facebook. Love it. There's a delay. Live on Facebook. Yes, we are. And I'm getting a little bit of a feedback loop. There's a delay. A little bit of delay. Yes, we are. And I'm getting a little bit Oh, I'm so glad that we are named Five Lemons Laughing because this is hilarious. We are doing our first live, or not our first live streaming, but a first time in a long time. And we have guests on the show, listeners, who are going to ask us questions. But first, we wanted to give you an inside look about how stuff really works in our world. And you just got a glimpse that sometimes life doesn't work like you would think it should. So this is a perfect introduction for what our podcast is all about. It's about laughing at life and living our best lives. So we're going to start out how we normally do. You guys don't see it, but we start off with a prayer. It's a process of grounding, of partnering up. So I'm going to invite you just to pause for a moment. Letting go of the past, knowing that the future is unfolding just as it should. I am grateful to be here with this powerful group of women, knowing as we allow ourselves to radiate with love, it is easier for those around us to do the same. Claiming this time as sacred, celebrating our willingness to let go of our stuff, to let go of the ego's will, and to ground firmly in unconditional love. Claiming every thought and every word is for the sole purpose of allowing, of allowing unconditional love, the thread that combines us all. We are claiming this is done. We are sharing it with all. There is no other way. And so it is. And okay. so it is beautiful. Yeah. So we have two guests on our show. We have Maureen <laughs> and Sarah. Welcome. They Welcome. have um, brought with them a couple of questions, topics of conversation. Um, so, but before we get started with that, does any of the other Lemonettes want to say anything about our this question and answer or about what we do behind the scenes, anything like that before we jump in. Oh, I think you summed it up wonderfully, Amanda. Thank you for taking the lead. Yeah, you're <laughs> you welcome. so well. Yeah, thank you, Penny. <laughs> well, yeah, I will just... receive the praise. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're just so excited to have an opportunity to be live with our listeners and to have Maureen and Sarah here. It's just so cool. And I can't wait to hear their questions. <laughs> I know these two ladies personally. And so I'm just excited to see what's going to pop out of their mouths. 
<laughs> okay. Anything else before we jump in? We're good. I'm right. echoing That's... everything Amanda and Penny have said. Yeah. All right. All right, Sarah. So I'm going to start with you. All right. <laughs> I, I, I wish I had something more prepared, but um, that's all right. You've this, come to the this right. It's going to be like a stream yeah. of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stream of consciousness style. Um, I, I've been doing a lot of meditation in the last year and I, I took a break for several months and then I got back into it um, a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, okay, I like the idea of setting intentions before I meditate. So one day I did and a bunch of stuff came up and the next day I was like, okay, let's just keep, keep rolling with that. And I would write it down before I sat down to meditate. And I was, I had been listening to you guys before this. And one of the things that, that struck me that my mother said I should be listening to. Wow. Was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your mom says that you should listen, right? <laughs> uh, well, there is a should in there. Yeah. <laughs> Hardcore. You heard in between the lines. Mm -hmm. um, but also I, I thought, all right, I'll just, I'll, I'll try it out. And so um, the thing that was kind of striking me when I was listening to you all was it was during the abundance and prosperity sequence. And uh, it was about the fear of scarcity. And boy, howdy, did that boil up like a whole bunch for me. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of focusing on, you know, where is my fear and scarcity? You know, where does that lie? Where can I kind of unbundle that to, to, to deal with it? And so I sat down to meditate and I don't need to get into the what or the why, <laughs> but the resolution was pretty powerful and it led me into other focus. And that was that I can trust myself. I can trust other people and I can trust the universe. And like, like all kinds of places in my body, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I can really trust that, but oh my God, let's try it out on size. And I kept just kind of diving into that. And the universe is bringing all these other things up. And I found an article from Mary O'Malley. I didn't know who this was. So if this is resonating for anybody, great. <laughs> but um, I, <laughs> I was like, all right, let's pull that thread. And I found an article that she wrote on the six levels of consciousness. And I'm like, wow, this is really really resonating with me like all the things she's talking about even down to the microscopic details of how she's explaining it are things that have come up in my own meditations which is really cool because the universe is talking to me right right but I, I like in the moment she's giving all these gifts and ideas about how to manage through each stage because even though there's like a hierarchy of stages through higher consciousness you're never going to just go through the stages like a video game you're going to keep coming back to stage one or stage four or whatever it is. And so you got to keep it into your toolbox all the time. So I was just writing down notes on that. And the one that struck me was about curiosity. And the and so I in my brain, I had this like mantra going, OK, aggressive curiosity. I'm just going to go through. I, I don't know if you guys cuss on this show, so I'm trying really hard. <laughs> <laughs> We do. We do. We do. It's okay. We do. We cuss light. <laughs> Go through my gosh darn day with a dose of a healthy dose of aggressive curiosity because, like, what the hell is going on here all the time? And I was telling Amanda earlier that I just, I literally just got back from a family reunion. And this was kind of a gnarly one because we have to like pack up everything from the family house and deal with it. Mm -hmm. This isn't my family. This is my husband's family. And uh, an elder in the family pulled me aside and told me that, you know, like the rules on how to discuss things at the the family business meetings. And it's like pretty formal, like they have an LLC and everything. And she's telling me like, it's the rules. And I was like, but is it the bylaws? So I, I just went into the whole thing. Like, uh, how can I go into this moment that's super awkward? Because this isn't really my family, but with with curiosity. So I just kept asking these why questions because I don't know what else to do. I'm feeling really awkward. And she kept answering my questions. And then after a few minutes, she started spilling her guts about family 
business, like people that I actually care about who've passed on and I don't know what to do with myself anymore. And I was like getting really like it, traumatic stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think this is what she meant by curiosity. <laughs> But here I am having this experience. And I was like, I, so I told Amanda, this was because I didn't know if I could have joined today. I was like, okay, so how do you have curiosity through the day when, when this is the crap the universe is pulling up for you? Like, I don't know, maybe this is just a one-off. I don't know. But can anybody read through that question? <laughs> Melissa, I saw you head bobbing a lot, so I'm going to kick it to oh, you. I'm just a head bobber. <laughs> um, <laughs> my chair, my chair bobs. So. Um, no, I, I actually really related a lot with the meditation and um, getting signs through meditation and other parts of your life where you just, like you said, you follow the thread or pull the thread. Um. I would say that you take what comes at you. You take, if you're, you know, curious about things and you let it come in and you can also choose to not react to, to what you're hearing or not take it personally, not make a story about it. Of course, miracles would say not make a meaning out of it. Um, so I guess that's what I would say. Let it just roll through. There's nothing you have to fix about it. Right. Yeah, I really like what you said, Melissa. And I, I was just thinking when you were sharing, Sarah, that just listen and learn is um, um, a, it's a cliche, but it's a great little slogan to live by. And so when you're in aggressive curiosity, just listening and just see what you can learn from what you're hearing. Um, I think that a lot of times we think we have to respond when people talk, except you, you could just say, oh, uh-huh. But you don't have to like, um, like agree or with whatever. You can just say, oh, okay. Or some other statement that wouldn't have you agreeing with what they say, but just that you acknowledge that you've heard what they've said. Or you could just say, oh, I acknowledge what you're saying or something like that. Kind of just free flow in this too. But just listen and learn. Just listen. Yeah. Yes, I like that because um, who knows why she felt the need to go into all of that with you. Maybe that was cathartic and healing for her in a way. Who knows like what benefit there was for her in that. And um, I like from the Alison Armstrong teachings, which we've referenced on this show a few times, um, I like what she says about assuming that there's a good reason for for what people are doing. Mm -hmm. And even if we don't understand it, and even if the good reason is like a good reason to their ego personality self, maybe not like a good spiritual reason that they're doing it, but it makes sense to them at some level. It's a defense mechanism or a safety thing or a coping strategy that they've learned. So um that helps me too. Like I can bring curiosity about like, I wonder what the good reason for doing this is. I'm sure there's a good reason in there. And um, another thing from the Alice and Armstrong teachings is like, I, I'm, Amanda can correct me on this if I'm getting it wrong, but sometimes we don't even have to listen to understand. We certainly don't want to listen to respond. We don't have to even listen to understand. We can just listen to hear for the person to just be heard. And that can be, that can be it. That can be the only thing that we do. And that can be truly helpful in and of itself. So, cause a lot of people don't have that. Um, but those are, those are my takeaways and additions to what everyone else has shared. If I heard your original question correctly, like how do we stay in this curious, the state of curiosity and, and maybe open-hearted and compassion when, people are showing up in a wonky way. Did it make you- Is that helping at all, Sarah? Or is there anything you want to clarify with us? Were you uncomfortable with what she told you? And oh, that wild, wildly uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> wildly <laughs> uncomfortable. But, but I think, I think the, I think all of this is resonating, but I think ultimately in the space that what was happening was 
And my husband picked up on this long before I did, because I was just like, why is this happening? <laughs> uh, was that the, the family had been protecting him from information. And he reached out to her after he learned, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, that, which is strange for me as a person. Normally I'm just like, fine, vomit your information on me. I don't care. I'm okay. But, but it was, it was wildly uncomfortable because of the nature of the information that I was gathering. And it wasn't like she hadn't shared this information with anybody else. She just hadn't shared it with my husband. And so she, I, at, for some strange reason, I was a better conduit than him. And he he reached out to her the next day and was like, yo, you don't have to do this. <laughs> this is not necessary. And also, please don't do that again. <laughs> and thankfully, because I was like, oh, my God, nobody should know that stuff. But apparently everybody knew it except us or me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it was. um I think it was just in the face of me trying to take take some ownership of my own process, my own work. And then this came up almost immediately next. And I thought, this, this can't be. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. Curiosity with it. You yeah, like, oh, I was curious. I, I wonder why that's coming up. I, yeah, it's just I, you know. So, you know, the daily pressures, the daily stressors of life and how to stay curious and active and, and not just become repressed and, and automaton in the day-to-day -day stuff. And, and then weird stuff comes up and it's, it's, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot to go yeah. through. Well, I would just like to add, I mean, I, everything that's been said is, I, I felt is right on point. The only thing that I would like to add is just always remembering that it's in the awareness that the healing happens. It's not about doing anything. It's being aware of the information, being aware of what you feel about what was shared with you. Why do you feel uncomfortable about that? Is there anything in it that you could take from it, process differently than you would have had you not chosen to be so open to receive and so curious, you know, is there is there the growth and healing in that and being aware that the, that you felt uncomfortable? And I, I feel like that's all spirituality and growth is, is being aware of what you're hearing, how it makes you feel. And can you go beyond that moment in time without getting more damage, without, you know, coming unscathed? And were you able to do that is how I would look at it. And that's, that's hard, Drusilla. That's, that's, it is hard. that's a practice, right? That is a practice. Being able to sit in uncomfortableness is a, it takes a lot of practice. And well, what's the really cool thing about that though, yeah. is that in your discomfort, Sarah, is your greatest opportunity for growth. Yes. And Sorry, Amanda, I talked okay, over you. I'm going to jump in here um, <laughs> because what Sarah's saying is resonating with what I wonder about. Um, Amanda says often that the spiritual journey isn't all roses mm -hmm. and that there is obstacles. Are we looking at an obstacle right here? Is this an example of it? And if so, what kinds of practices are really effective when you hit these things? yeah a juicy question it is a juicy question mm -hmm. that's because this is exactly what i'm talking about when i say it's not all sunshine and rainbows or roses yeah. or whatever i say mm -hmm. well i just make up stuff when i say it but, <laughs> but what i heard in sarah's story and please sarah if i correct correct me if i get any of this wrong but at the very beginning um, we were talking about, um, you brought up the abundance and the fear and then having to trust, right? So, and meditating on it and consciously setting an intention, whatever it is. So in this world, sending out, okay, I want to heal. 
I want to do it now. Even the word that you used, aggressive, right? Aggressive. What was the other word? I don't curiosity. Know. Curiosity, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you're not going on this. You're not tiptoeing in the water. I mean, you're diving in head first, right? So mm-hmm. you want re- aggressive results. So the universe is like, Okay. Here you go. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, it makes me think of exactly. radical forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You asked for it. You yeah. got it. So that's yes. when I talk yeah. about the spiritual path is in all rainbows. That's what I'm talking about. So we're asking for healing. We're asking for it now. We're asking for it aggressively. We want trust. We want prosperity and we want abundance. And then to Maureen's point, it's like, so what happens when all of this stuff comes up, right? So um, the practice we start, like I'll start off with tools, right? The practice of meditation. So I can't sit in meditation. Can't is a strong word. I choose not to do that, right? I choose, like, that's just not my wheelhouse. I go for small glimpses in the day where I empty my mind. I don't set an intention for um, my meditations. I go for peace. I go for blank and I can only get it in small bits. I do it. I have a practice in the morning where I face each direction and I used to talk or, you know, I, I am grateful for all the different directions and what they represent. And now I am part of that is just, it's the listening part. It's, it's the being quiet. So um, that's a tool to, that's a tool for me, not actually asking for specific stuff just the state of allowing that's a tool that i've used so sarah that i just threw a lot at you would you like to respond or anything in any way maureen too right because you both are now at you know engaged <laughs> well she and i've been engaged for a while yeah. <laughs> Bad ways, yeah <laughs> No, I think I, I definitely am going to keep meditating. I think it's um, it it's the fastest path for me to kind of break the veil between the unconsciousness, the universe, whatever we call it. Um, but it it you know it's it's a constant practice. So you know, figuring out time in a busy day to do it. You know, with I've got three teenagers and a new job starting tomorrow and all this stuff going on. So it's just a matter of like making it a commitment because that, and I think ultimately that's kind of the crux of what I'm asking. It's not so much, it's not even a question. It's just, Oh my God, how do we handle day-to-day life in the minutia and still be a spiritual being at the same time? And I feel like It seems like a big question, but also I know it's the minute to minute, the day to day that is the spirituality, the focus. I get it. I totally get it. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, I'm so tired of making dinner. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Well, you know, one of the tools that I've been using, Sarah and Maureen, is writing about things that are coming up. And getting them out of my head so that they're on paper so that I can have that space to be able to meditate. Because when I have a zillion things rattling around in my head, there is no way I'm on Amanda and I cannot sit still or I sit still, but my mind is so it's like a wild horse. I thought you'd like that, Amanda, a wild horse running away. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I'm, I've been really practicing writing this year and writing's really been helping me. And even at night before I go to sleep, if I've got a lot going through my head, like, oh my God, I didn't get this done. I need to do this. I do a brain dump and I dump it all out of my brain, get it on paper. And then I, and then I say, okay, God, you've got it now. And so I can go to sleep. And so um, that's another, that's just a tool that I wanted to share with you. Writing is I think overlooked sometimes. And because people have a bad connotation about journaling. Oh my God, I got to journal this out. Well, if you just write about stuff and just do a stream of consciousness and just get it out of you, who knows what will unfold. 
And I think there is magic and re resistance. I think you can find a lot of answers and resistance and questioning yourself about, huh, with curiosity, wonder why this triggers me so much. Huh, what is it in me that does not want to hear this? You know, those, you can get a lot of answers uh, about yourself mm -hmm. that way as well. <laughs> That's what I'm working with a lot is, <clears throat> excuse me, my resistance. And I love that. Um, this, before, I'm sorry, Penny, but before this massive, like, you know, event at the family reunion that I experienced, that's where I was going. I was like, wow, I think I'll just sit here and ask questions instead of having, you know, ideas about what's expected of me or what the world should be. And I'll just ask questions from now on. But then all of a sudden I was like, I don't even know what questions to ask. Uh, and so I, I was, I felt frustrated by even that. <laughs> it was such a weird place to be this. I, I don't know. I felt like, um, was that girl from from the, the the Mrs. What's it and and who's it? What's that book? Uh... <laughs> <Not me. laughs> Maureen, I'm counting. Oh, no, but that should you. definitely be the name of with the that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not important. It's not important. I need a better oh, clue, yeah. Sarah. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like an I'll interesting in book. Like Twenty minutes. It'll be totally long past, and I'll be like, I got that. Post it's it on Facebook. <laughs> Okay, how, about, how about the old parable? Like, um, there was an ma old man in a village, and his horse ran off. And the villagers came to him and said, "How terrible is this? Your one horse ran off. Oh my gosh!" And he said, "Could be good, could be bad. Who knows?" And then a week later, the horse showed back up into the village, but also showed up with a whole herd that he had found and brought back to the village. And so the villagers went to the guy and was like, you are so rich now. This is unbelievable. This is awesome. And he said, could be good, could be bad. Who knows? And so the next week, the boy, his little boy got on the horse to kind of try and break the horse and he fell off and broke his leg. And all the villagers came in and said, how terrible. Your boy broke his leg. Is he going to be okay? Da, da, da. And he goes, could be good, could be bad. Who knows? The next week, the government officials came into town looking for kids about that age to fight in a war for their country. And they saw he couldn't walk. He was in a cast and everything. And so he did not get selected for the war, but everyone else of that age got selected out of the village. And the villagers that were left came back and said, you are so lucky. You still have your son. He's still here. And he said, could be good, could be bad. Who knows? And on and on and on it could go, right? So it may have felt bad, but it could really be good. It could be bad that you know all that information now, right? Who knows? Yeah. The trick yeah. is just trusting that it's all working out for our good, even before we get to the next part of the story where the how it worked out for our good is revealed. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Morgan, I want to ask you a question about what you just said. Um, you know, what, what you say isn't something that comes naturally to me, trusting that everything is going to work out for good. How do you reconcile that with evil? Do you not believe that there is evil? And if so, what explains those things? That's a big question Maureen so I um I believe that we are living in an illus illusory dream state of separation from God and in this state of density duality polarity we have all the opposites we have the good and evil we have the black and white we have the the better than less than and mm -hmm. um and so, yes, I think we see evidence of evil in this world. And I believe that this is just a dream state of separation from God. It's not real. And um, so, <laughs> A Course in Miracles says, it's that's very like lofty. So what do we do when evil appears like in our 
life or on the world stage or whatever, um, A Course in Miracles, one thing that it talks about is everything is either expressing love or asking for love. So if you see all acts of evil as really um, a cry from a brother for love, then that's one way to look at it. And it goes back to that thing I said about um, what if there's a good reason for the for what this person is doing? So even if you get to like the worst of the worst people, if you look far enough back in their history, going back to when they were a child, or if you believe in reincarnation to maybe a lifetime ago or 10 lifetimes ago or a thousand lifetimes ago, and you see the different conditions that create, turned them into this person that they're being, then there's a good reason for the, the, the reason that they believe the things they do or behave in the things they do. They are protecting their ego personality self in some way. They're justifying their behaviors. And it's all a scared little child underneath all of that, just asking to be loved. Um, that can be really difficult to hold. Like we can know that that's true. And as we're living, having this experience of living in the world of form, it can be really hard to hold on to that truth when it's like right in your face. So that's definitely where the practice, 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 practice. That's why there are so few actual ascended masters. (laughs) We're all striving for, for like that Christhood and to be like Jesus or whoever. Um, yeah. I would like to add to that, that it doesn't mean like to see, I think I've just had this epiphany recently. Like if you really want to fuck with someone you don't like, right. You see the Christ in them. (laughs) Right. That is the best way to really mess with them. And Jesus did that. (laughs) Exactly. Right. So like, think about someone on the world stage that you don't like at all, like to go deep into like, see their oneness, like to go to that part. And then from that space, it's, it's the process of divine action. So it's not saying don't lock up a child molester. It's not saying don't vote for the other person, right? It's not saying any of those. It's it's um, coming from a place of inspired action. So it, yeah. evil does exist yeah. in this world. I'm not saying evil doesn't exist. Evil mm-hmm. does exist. And there are ways to take action to... Uh, Loving, inspired action yeah. that holds them accountable for their behaviors. It's not punitive it's just this is the consequence of behaving like that it's a healthy boundary like you behave like that uh we don't get to be friends anymore whatever that may be but um i can i share a quote that somebody shared with me that i thought was a very interesting perspective about this subject yeah i'm gonna i'll 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 speak quickly okay it says some people incarnate in this life to play a difficult role a role that invites others to decide who they will be in relation to this person. Will they vilify? Will they forgive? Will they abandon? Will they fight? Will they love? Will they teach? Who will they be in relation to someone who seems impossible to change and who seemingly poses a threat? You must know this soul came into this life willing to play a painful role. Within them is the same sacred eternal spirit that lives within you. The difference is they were willing to be the center of attention for harsh judgment, even hate, so that everyone around them could decide who they would be. I'm not saying I totally agree with all of that, but I just think it's a very interesting and helpful perspective to consider. Well, and the thing is, is that I go in and out of all of those. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I am just a human being and I have honest reactions and then I can get myself gathered up again and get back to my my loving self. And then I, something else will trigger me at times and I'll go into not being forgive, not forgiving them or, or yeah. So I think I'm all of those things that you mentioned, Morgan, at any given moment. And mm. I'm getting better at controlling that. I get, not controlling it, but just being more in my loving heart. 
Drusilla, did yeah, you I think you, you, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I think it's you. The, the key to it, um, before Morgan read that, um, in terms of just being practical about it, I think not having judgment thoughts is is the bottom line to start there every day. I remember first coming into the Course in Miracles and understanding what it truly means not to have judgment thoughts and really kind of like you, Sarah, with your intentions. I set the intention to not have judgment thoughts. I literally woke up every day saying, I'm going to have this day to be open to what spirit brings to me, not about the beliefs that have been, you know, instilled into me, you know, from birth, not what society wants me to think about X, Y, Z. And when I tell you there were so many monumental <laughs> growth opportunities for me, just like Sarah. <laughs> um, and it was, um, but at the same time, it was just so rewarding to go through life and see people um, like Amanda just mentioned, some people that are really well known and that you might have some really strong opinions about to be able to look at that person with a level of compassion and not apply such strong feelings about them. I mean, and that's some obvious evidence that I think people can experience right away by choosing not to have judgment thoughts. Um, and to kind of just be specific about it, um, the word in and of itself, good and evil are judgment thoughts, right? You can't even get there without some judgment behind it. And, um, you know, just like what Penny was saying, we all move that it's fluid, right? And none of the actions really dictate who that person is. So, and it certainly doesn't dictate me because I've done and said some bad things in my lifetime. It doesn't make me a bad person. So why would be, it be applicable to anyone else? So that's kind of how I started out in terms of the little things that bring you to the, it seems lofty to say, yeah, how can you look at someone who does egregious things and not hold them accountable or not, you know, look at them and think that they're evil? Well, you know, if you wouldn't look at yourself that way, then why would you impose that on someone else? I think we do look at ourselves that way. I think that's how it makes it so easy. To exactly right. That yeah. is the other. <laughs> we're judges. Every sword has every sword mm -hmm. has two sides, and you cannot. It is impossible to do it to your brother and not do it to yourself. Yeah, so true. I, and I'm thinking of like the Montessori style of teaching, like you're showing me that you can't be trusted with scissors. So it's like just like treating people like they're Montessori school children. You know what I mean? Like, like your, your actions are showing me that you can't be trusted with my heart. I, you know, I can't be in a close relationship with you, but I still see your wholeness and your perfection beyond these actions that you're demonstrating. And Maureen, what, how, what do you think about, or what do you feel about, um, about thinking that evil and good are both judgments instead of really real because they feel really real but they do feel real and I'm not sure that I'm there um it's part of everything that I learned coming up in terms of my spiritual background had this dichotomy of good and evil sure. and it was always there. Um, the idea of course was that God transcended it all, but I'm not sure that little children get that message quite as, as clearly. Um, there are some things that make it difficult for me to believe it's a judgment and there are some behaviors that I just find so reprehensible that I have a hard time not making judgment. So um, 
it, it's something I struggle with. And when I listen to you all, um, I, I admire your approach to things. I'm not there. I'm just not. I'm not that's I'm okay not either, Maureen. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I honestly, like I, I've shared this on the podcast as well. Like I have to, I had to unfollow some of my, this is friends. So we're, we're not even speaking on a big world stage level of like the most egregious people out there, but like I had close friends I had to unfollow because seeing them on social media triggered me and I couldn't stay not judging them. I couldn't stay in my loving heart and sending them love and blessings when I was constantly triggered. So I had to remove myself from that. So like I had, I had to, and I still, I mean, I don't watch the news anymore. I have to shelter myself from some of it because like the way that I can be the greatest force for good on this world is to hold a high vibration of love. And I can't hold a high vibration of love if I'm constantly triggered and defensive and having to sort out my forgiveness and do all this spiritual work and excavating and journaling. Like it's, it, you know, I can't be constantly in that, that fight or flight, figuring out the, doing the spiritual homework, like part of like, let me just, I can control what's in my spirit. Some people might think it's putting your head in the sand, but because we're working at the level of the invisible. Like I know better than that. Like I know that keeping my vibration high and my focus on truth and on love is what is most truly helpful for myself and for all of life by extension. So that, you know, you would not be alone and finding it very difficult to, to stomach what we see happening. And so I just try not to see it, honestly, like that, that may sound like a cowardly way to deal with it, but. I still want to punch well, people in the throat. That's just, that's <laughs> what it is, right? I don't. You give the look like you're gonna. I do. <laughs> I do. My husband says I can never play poker, right? I just can't. <laughs> yeah. It's a process, Maureen, to, uh, it's just keep at it. I think that's the biggest thing is just to keep, setting your intention, what you want in your life and ask yourself if what I'm doing right now, is that moving, is that moving me towards what I want or is it moving me away from what I want? And if it's moving you towards what you want, then keep doing it. If it feels good, keep doing it. If it's not, then you get to choose again. Every second we get a second chance. And so take those seconds and make, take those chances, make different choices. And I, I, I don't want to, gloss over what Morgan read. Um, a part of that whole thing was not truly being real with ourselves about our purpose and how they may be intertwined and how we may be the villain in someone else's story. <laughs> you know, I mean, how can you then, I mean, it's just so clear to me when I think about the whole paid actors. If you think about everybody... <laughs> around you and in your life, if they're paid actors, even if they're playing a villain, how is it then that you're, you're judging them when they're here to help us on our spiritual journey mm -hmm. to learn the things that we professed? You're not going to experience it unless you've offered it for yourself, the learning and the healing. So if then you say, my spouse is here as my partner, to help me on this spiritual journey. Yes, he's provoking me. Yes, it irritates the hell out of me. And yes, <laughs> but it's because you're learning by contrast. We do have a choice, but for most of us, that's how we learn. We learn through pain. We learn through contrast. And because those people are persons are bringing that healing to your front door, we tend to want to, you know, vilify it instead of taking ownership of that opportunity for healing. It's almost like you're rejecting the healing and projecting what's happening onto that person. And yeah, it, it, that was probably one of the things that really helped me to the most is seeing other people, my brothers and sisters as my helpers. Mm -hmm. I think too, Maureen, there's just mysteries. 
we don't we don't have the answer for. And I think we're all talking about um, being responsible for your reaction to the mystery. So there, I think maybe religion and philosophy and politics and how the world has evolved is a response to what feels like good and evil. Like, you know, like, oh gosh, these, so these humans are doing these terrible things to these other humans. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to make rules that you can't. We're going to, um, it feels bad, all that kind of stuff. And then we're going to be, want to put that towards like, be able to pray to someone to make it different, that kind of thing. So let's just say it's human. There's some humanness about it. We don't understand. Like, I don't understand how people do terrible things to children or other human beings, right? There's just not an understanding to it, but you can continue to raise your vibration, continue to practice non-judging, continue to practice loving kindness within the mystery. Does that make sense? Does that? It does. And so, I'll think about that. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, you can have your own your own um, view and healing and love about the situation. I love it. We're giving you a lot to chew on today. <laughs> it's just, it's practice. I remember when I first started, I've talked about it before on here, but when I worked at uh, Beer Creek, it was spiritual speed dating, right? I was... <laughs> exposed to a lot of different personalities, the people that I worked mm. with, the customers over and over again. And I kept, um, I had a prayer taped to my book. If anybody is, you know, ever in a server, right. That's where you keep all your stuff. And I would go into the bathroom and I would just say it over and over and over again. It was just about healing throughout all dimensions of time and space. And, uh, I said it a thousand times every shift. It takes a lot of practice to reframe that. And what I think is just amazing now, and I've seen it with all of the limonettes, is that um, on this spiritual journey, as for me personally, I'll say, as I've cleaned up that vibration, I just have less of that in my everyday life. Right. I have less um, disharmony. And if it comes up, it's so it's so loud, like, OK, this is what happened. This is what you know, I, I can't have this in my life. And this is how we're going to fix it. And it's and it's not really even me fixing it. It's like, OK, this situation came comes up. I had a property boundary issue. Right that came up recently and uh i i couldn't even respond in the min in the moment because it was just blowing up all around me and i'm like okay i don't have to i'm not going to sort this out and i just let it rest i sur we surrendered it i'm like okay god's gonna handle this the universe is gonna handle it, whatever words the next day, the solution was just so easy and so harmonious. So that's it's practice. So I see the result of this way of living in my everyday life. Yeah. And well, that's exactly where I'm trying to get get to. Yeah. But yeah. right now I'm like being bombarded with all those issues. And I that it reminds me of the the meditation that I was doing. The I trust myself, I trust others, I trust the universe. But in my meditation, I, I love rafting. So I trust myself. I have the oars, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm driving the boat. I trust others. They are driving the boat. I trust the universe. I'm out of the boat and I'm just in the water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's okay. It don't matter what's happening because the universe has my back. And I feel like I, I, I can't wait to get there. Because right now it's literally, it's not even every day, it's every moment something is coming at me. It's like I'm in the rapids 
And it doesn't matter. I have an oar, somebody else has an oar, somebody's halfway out of the boat, and I just don't even know how to survive these rapids right now. And um, so I can't wait to get there. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what you're just, so well, you do is, have three teenagers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, I wish that were the worst of my problems. <laughs> like Sounds this, like this. your husband's family. <laughs> yeah. Tip. yeah tip of the iceberg guys <laughs> so sarah we're getting getting towards the end of our time so let me ask you this so how do you want to feel every day what is what is the dominating feeling tone that you would like i want to get out of the boat and trust the river so trust that's how, is, I, want, that's how yeah. I want to be i just want to like float down the river and just enjoy the ride Yeah. I, to me, like when I first heard those words in my brain or whatever, mm -hmm. um, I was like, oh, I, I want to be in charge. I want to trust myself. That seems like a number one goal, right? Yeah. And I was like, ooh, but I feel like I really should work on trusting other people. That's kind of a big thing that people talk about. And then I was like, I just like my favorite thing in like this is a metaphor and a reality. Mm -hmm. I love getting out of the boat and just floating. That's my favorite thing. I just want to go down the river and enjoy the ride. And, and right now I, I just, I, I, I don't know how to do that. There's so many responsibilities in this world that I just don't even know which one to start with. Um, it's I a think, process. Yeah. Acceptance. I think Melissa is the perfect person to respond to that. That's I do too. She's lived her life. I would just say, like, I was just thinking acceptance because acceptance is your answer to everything today. So accept that it's coming at you, accept that you're a little out of control, accept you can't change anybody, accept that it's going to just keep coming at you until it's not coming at you. And um, to, for me, I've that's where I've worked instead of stop trying to stop it or trying to take all that that's happening and change it into something else. That's still a lot of effort. That's still a lot of, a lot of your own manipulation and your own control. So yeah, yeah this with it. So Melissa, I so remember you talking about that in the episode and I was like, man, she, I know I need to think about that one, but ah, bless it. <laughs> <laughs> So Melissa, so what are you saying? So like when life hits, Sarah, are you saying, you know, like, are you saying that like a mantra or something? So something happens. Well, I think, I think you're so totally on the right path with the curiosity instead of maybe radical curiosity, Aggressive. maybe it's, huh, why is this? I wonder why this is happening. Or I know I went on the big story, but like, huh. Could be good, could be bad. Who knows? You know, just kind of yeah. that. A little more. And just get in the water and float too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Within, well, and um, I want to say, Sarah, if you don't, if you have 20 things flying at you today, for example, and you feel triggered this way, that way, coming and going, if you could redirect your focus to like the one time today that you responded differently. The one time today that you remembered to take a breath before responding, like maybe you, you had a breakthrough today and you were so focused on the 200 things that were coming at you that you didn't respond as well as you would have liked to, that you missed the breakthrough. And so like, just, just claim those small victories and that's what you build on. Yeah. Mm. And also so I'd like to add, I think it's a kind of a combination of what Melissa and Morgan said, but just surrender something so that you can realize the success and, and noticeably so, like maybe something having to do with your kids or the heavy, something heavy, but something that you're, you're not going to freak out totally over, right? Just leave it leave it to the universe to handle and give it a few days and see if it works itself out. And then you have something to work with, right? Cause it sounds like you haven't realized 
anything that you could say, ah, oh, spirit handled this and it worked out perfectly. I've been, I've been drinking from the fire hose for about a year now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, maybe I haven't had a chance. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to offer one other thing, and then I want to hear um, a final word from Maureen as well. But um, Drusilla's share reminded me of this. A really powerful practice that I wish I would do with more consistency is at night before bed to reflect on three or maybe five things that you think that you handled really well. So you marinate in that, you celebrate that and you magnify more of that and five things you would like to have respond differently. And, and what would the different response look like? And that's how we reprogram the neural pathways so that we can get to a closer, like we can respond closer to the ideal the next time it comes around by like actually going through that process mentally. So I just will add that as a helpful tool that I could use myself. And Sarah, what I know about you is you are the river. <laughs> I love that, Amanda. I love you, Sarah. I love you too. <laughs> Maureen, final thoughts. I love Sarah too. Yeah. <laughs> I love Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> This has been this has been good for me. I um my challenge in all this is uh what Melissa was talking about, acceptance. And then to do that, I have to slow down my mind, which uh it's pretty messy in there. It's uh it's not an easy thing to do. And um uh, it's a process. I'll keep at it. Well, well we're so happy that you joined us on this journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think going back to Penny's thing about journaling is a great way to slow the mind down. And, you know, the practice I just shared uh, with Sarah, the, the great thing about that is you're doing the work after the fact. So like you, you can still get just the same benefits. Like if you didn't handle these three situations, like from the most loving perspective or as lovingly as you would have liked to, you can deal with it in the aftermath because time is an illusion and still reap the benefits. So like, yeah, even if you're still not really sure how to get to that space of acceptance, you can, you can process after the fact, even if you can't do it right in the moment and it can be just as healing. So I, my final thoughts are that um, for Maureen and Sarah, in listening to both of you, it's amazing that I see a little bit of you and your personalities and Penny, Morgan, Melissa, Amanda, <laughs> and myself when we met a few years ago, we were all in the same exact place saying the exact same things. So that's hopefully the that's a testament. Yes, we've all slowed down tremendously. We've changed so much of our lives. Like I've totally changed careers. People have relocated. I mean, it's like a night to day difference in how we're doing versus being. I think we're way more being than we are doing now. And I think that's important to note. Yeah, that's really a great point, Drusilla. Because like I'm in the process of rethinking everything I'm doing because... I want to be more grounded and still, and that's a challenge for me. <laughs> but I just wanted to wrap. Oh, go ahead, Melissa. I was going to say one last thing is I've had to pray a lot for help, just for spirit to do what I can't do yet. And um, just be willing to be willing. We've all heard that. Willing to be willing to get it. Just someone show me? So there are things I've had that I couldn't have done by myself. I had to hand it over. That's a really great point, Melissa. There's a really yes. great book out there, Angels in My Hair. And uh, Lorna 
Byrne, I think that's how you say her last name. She wrote that there's angels that team of angels that are ready for hire at any given moment. They're just waiting for you to ask to help and that you need their help. And so hire a team of angels to help you get through this process. It's kind of a fun thing. I do it all the time because I need a lot of help too. <laughs> and so I, I wanted to just share a couple posts that set the daily intention to be open to what spirit brings me. Life is a process or, or a series of uh, growth opportunities. It's a process and acceptance does make a difference. It does. And so anyway, um, thank you everyone for helping me on my spiritual journey today. <laughs> it's been really eye-opening. I really appreciate that Marie Maureen and Sarah joined us and I loved your questions. I think we all loved your questions. It, it helps us dig a little deeper in the well as well. And so um, we just really love and appreciate our listeners. And it's so great to have the two of them live <laughs> right yeah. with us. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. So, so with fun. that, we, uh, that's a wrap of episode 80. Gosh, 87. I forgot. 87. 87. 87. 87. Yeah. Our live, our five lemons laughing live right here on Facebook. And um, you can catch us on the pod on our podcast platforms too. It'll be about a week before we get this posted, but we'll get it posted soon. And we just uh, love and appreciate you all and wish you the very, very best on your spiritual journey. And just give yourself a little grace because the changes that you're working on, they, well, time is, is an illusion as Morgan has stated, but they can take time. Mm -hmm. And so just be, just give yourself some love and grace and just know that little by little things change. And all of a sudden you'll wake up one day and go, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> so let's keep at it. Podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Have a really beautiful rest of your day. Bye. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.